Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I am very pleased to say that this is the very first episode of my little coal culture lessons or whatever you want to call it, story time. I'm not going to do anything in order as far as time events and all that, you know, a timeline. I'm just going to start with these places and this one is my favorite, by far my favorite place on earth. It is Thurman, West Virginia. This is where my husband proposed to me. This is one of the very first cold places he took me to. I just, I love everything about this town. We actually got married here too. So this is the drive down. Uh, Thurman is located in Fayette County in West Virginia. Um, that is about an hour and a half away from Charleston, the capital for any of y'all. It is the New River Gorge, um, or the New River runs through it. So that, if any of y'all are familiar with that. You go down a really, really windy, it's not necessarily steep as much as it is windy, and it is a one-lane road, so when you're going down here, you, you know, there, if, you, if there's another car coming, you're just kind of out of luck. You're just going to have to scooch over as far as you can. There is absolutely no self-service down here, which I kind of like, but people still live in this town. I don't think there's um, six people anymore, though. I'm thinking there's probably like two or three, but they do still have a small population. So Thurman was founded after the Civil War. It was not a coal town or a coal camp, but it was like a uh, supply place, you know, a depot. They could come and refill and or everything, you know. And a lot of people came here on the weekends to kind of relax. And if you are familiar with West Virginia, um, our version of relaxing is probably not a typical one. It was a dry town. And the side of the river that we're on right now is actually called Glen Jean. People still call it Thurman, but it's Glen Jean because I believe his name was William McKell. He founded it so you could drink, basically. And there were there was a little district up and down. I can't remember what they called it. I think they called it Irish Row. And it was, you know, Irish little brothels everywhere up and down. The Dunglen Hotel was also on this side of the river. It had the longest running poker game uh, I believe it still holds the record to this day. The only reason it stopped was because the hotel was on fire. So you had Thurman, which we're not on that side of the river right now. We're on the Dunglen side, uh, or Glen Jean. You had Thurman, which was, you know, completely dry town. There was no, you know, or there wasn't supposed to be. And then you had Glen, Glen Jean, which was literally across the river that was just notorious for shenanigans. So I like to call this the Wild West of West Virginia. I'm sure somebody else has called it that. I haven't. I've never heard it, but um, I'm not. I'm not claiming that. You know, that's my title. This is well. That's not the New River. But that's a little creek that runs into it. But this is the New River that you're about to see here. Um, it is an incredibly dangerous river. People really underestimate it. Um, it's and I don't understand why they underestimate it because when you look at it here in a minute, you are going to understand. It is like it's no joke. Those rapids will take you. People die all the time here, and you know you, you have to wear a life jacket. You just you don't. It's not a river that you mess around in. White water rafting is really really big here, um, especially in Fayette County because that's where the New River mainly runs through. And of course, you've got the New River Gorge Bridge. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, it's, if you know what you're doing, it could be a lot of fun. I have personally never been whitewater rafting. I have no desire to go. I am not a strong swimmer. I love the river and I appreciate the river, but I am perfectly content on the bank. So we do have several rivers here in West Virginia that you can swim in. We swim in the Coal River. Um, it's kind of gross, but it's, you know, we kayak and everything else on it. And I mean, you can do stuff in the New River. You just really have to be experienced and know what you're doing so this little area right here it you know it'll sometimes it'll be covered in water it just depends on how high the river is but it's just absolutely gorgeous it's all covered in rocks too so it's just kind of what i'm taking y'all out so again we're on the Glen jean side which is where the dun Glen hotel was and then you're going to see this bridge right here and that leads over to the town of thurman but this shot was to show you guys how secluded it is I just, I love West Virginia. Sorry, you guys, for the background. My son is watching something and is apparently very animated. Those are my in-laws, y'all, by the way, too. Um, this is my son, Michael, and my son, Joe. And we are about to walk across the scariest bridge I've ever seen in my life. It's not really that dramatic, but y'all, you can see right down to the river. Um, when I went to college, we would have some Russian exchange students come in. 
and the tourism department, which is what I majored in, they would take them down here to, you know, walk them across this bridge just to show them because it was so, you know, it's intense. It's not as bad now because they put concrete on one side where you see, but I am still, you guys, I'm, as many times as I've walked across it, it scares the fire out of me every time. So my lovely daughter took over filming for me from here because I really have a hard time walking across this bridge. It, like I said, it's really intimidating to me. So, but she likes to film anyway. So you guys, I did minor in Appalachian history, but I just want to just add a little disclaimer here. I am not claiming any, you know, of this information as my own. I've done my own research and stuff, but you know take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm, I'm pretty solid on most of the majority of the facts, you know, like I do know who founded the town of Thurman, which was, I believe it was Colonel Thurman. He was a or General Thurman. He, anyway, Captain Thurman. He was in the Civil War um, for the Confederate side, and he founded Thurman. I believe he had 73 acres. Now this, this river, um, it actually connects several towns together, and there's several, there's, I believe it was the New River Coal Company, they owned the majority of the mines that were along here. But this, again, this is not a coal mining town. It is a coal mining supply town, but there there aren't any coal mines directly by it. Now, you can have, though, a supply town and five miles down the river is a coal camp. But if you can notice, like five miles of river and in the mountains is a lot different than five miles of a flat straight road. So, you know, it'll you can have a town on one side of the mountain and on the other, you know, two miles on the other way is a town, but it'll take you, you know, a good 45 minutes to an hour to get there driving because you usually have to go all the way around. But y'all, isn't this breathtaking? I don't know much about Rapid, so I can't really give you guys any details on that, but yeah, p people drive up and down on this road. We just like to walk. It's always something fun. Well, it's fun for my family. It's not really ever fun for me, but I do it anyway just because I don't want to be a I don't want to be a scary pants. So. Now, Thurman was an active town until the 80s. Um, a lot of Thurman, though, really died down in the 50s. Coal was mechanized, I believe, in 53, which mechanized meant they went from picking, you know, literally shoveling, uh, picking coal, coal mining coal with, you know, your hands and a pickaxe and all that. And then in 53, um, they went to using machines. So about that time, and even really before then, the town was just really starting to, you know, just kind of dissolve but it did stay a town until about the 80s like you know with, with more than three residents so I have in my research days in my research days I mean when I was in college and I was like I said working on my, my degrees and stuff I heard stories of um, people that would come down here on the weekends like in the 30s 40s 50s and they would uh, see people dumping bodies over the bridge like it was not uncommon like it was just that wild down here I'm not trying to paint a bad picture like I not obviously I'm not glorifying murder or anything like that either or violence but you know just to hear the history it's fascinating like I just I don't know and now to look at this town and it's just a complete ghost town so they do I think they do a ghost tour here once a year, this is my lovely mother-in-law and my father-in-law. That is me and my husband as well. She promised me that she was going to do a little skipping, and you're about to see it here in a minute. When I say skipping, I literally mean skipping. 
So the town, as you'll see, is further down there. There's three buildings that are left. Um, they are starting to fall apart, but I think the Park Service, which they do own the majority of this, is trying to fix them up. There are several homes in, in the town that are still there, but they are they're pretty close to dilapidated. I'm not sure which ones they're going to fix up or not. An interesting fact, if you all have ever seen the movie Mate One, this is where it was filmed. So Mate One is in West Virginia, and at some point I'm sure I will take you there. Um, but they didn't film it there in Mate One, which I really don't know why. But um, yeah, they did film it here. If y'all didn't realize, we're a bunch of goobers over here, so we just have a good time. Okay, so we have been going to Thurman, my husband and I and our kids, for, well, we've been together almost 10 years, so yeah, it's been a while. So the very first time we took my kids here, they were like, hey, mom, what are these headstones? Because you'll notice here several of the bricks have names on them, and they say in memory of and y'all, sometimes I just have diarrhea of the mouth and just say stuff just to be silly. And I was like, oh no, they couldn't fit everyone here, so they just stuck their ears here. So, if my kiddos watch this, well now y'all know I was kidding. But to this day, my kids still think that there's these are there's ears underneath here. And anytime we go somewhere, I don't. I think we were in Williamsburg. My son Michael said, hey, do they do the ear thing here too? So, I know that might seem a little weird or creepy, but yeah. I don't know. It'll be one of those memories I'm sure my kids will take with them forever. So we're getting ready to walk down here to the post office. I think the post office is closed. They do still use the town hall though. So as I told you guys before, this is where my husband and I got married. Um, we've been married way eight years, seven years, seven years this year, I believe. And when we got married here, they really weren't doing much with the tourism down in in this town it's really really gotten popular over the last years uh last few years i'm just gonna say it you know my husband and i that's what we are we're just trendsetters y'all i'm just totally kidding but it really was it was a lot calmer down here we didn't have to plan anything um i was friends with the lady that owned a piece of the property down here so she said we could just come down and get married on it anyway so we didn't have to worry about the park service but um yeah it was just it was real simple it was a lot of fun though I think this is where the water tower was. There was a meat packing plant here at one point too. There were quite a few different things. They had a doctor's office and a bank and a big hotel. And that's actually a piece of property that we got married on. So there was, you know, quite a bit of stuff here. I think it's just absolutely amazing how you can have just a big bustling mini metropolis in the middle of nowhere and then you know mother nature just takes over it if that might, you know so here's the little town of thurman there's my two sweet boys that is a coal loading dock i believe and you just kind of park your train underneath there and they would dump the coal into it this is just one of the old homes so as you all can see that is me my daughter is filming so we have quite a bit of fun doing this stuff she's my little buddy when it comes to all these things. So we went, um, we ended up getting lost. Well, not lost, but we, she and I ended up going off and exploring, so. But we've had several different sets of family pictures taken here. We will just come down here just for the fun of it. Like I said, this is like my favorite place on earth, y'all. 
If I could live down here, I would. We actually looked at a house for sale that um, it was an old, it was actually one of the doctors that worked on, you know, with coal miners would have injuries and such. His name was Dr. Harvey and he had a beautiful old home. And anyway, it was for sale and we looked at it and almost bought it, but decided not to. It just needed way too much work. So. I've looked into every one of these buildings multiple times, but I never get tired of just coming in here and just peeking again. It's like I see it new for the first time every time, even though it's not the first time and it's not new to me. But I just, I love this place. I'd be interested to know, do any of y'all have a place like this? Like it just, it's almost magical to you. You go there and it takes you to another place. <laughs> My little cute boys again. I don't, I don't know what they call this the air shaft. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's got, you know, it's real cool in here. And my daughter decided she was going to be mountain woman and run up it. And yes, you guys are going to see me act like a big old goober again. But this is what we do. This is our favorite pastime as a family. We love to go exploring places. We usually end up in the same ones, you know, every time too. But that's like my favorite thing to do is just get lost in my mind, you know, coming up with stories and just... I don't know, just trailing off into to my own little world. I like to picture myself back in another time. And this place especially because it reminds me of Bart and Lucy, which I guess we could say it's, it's me and my husband's our little alter ego. It's this little story we made up when we were first talking through text because we actually texted first. And we made up a story about Bart and Lucy and how uh, we met each other in a past life. And we were playing poker and I stole this saloon and he ended up taking out of it. It was just a silly, goofy story, but this is just when we came down here, Jeremy took me for the first place. Like, oh my gosh, this is where Bart and Lucy were at. This is where they met, you know, and it's just a story we've taken with us, so. My son, Michael, as much of a turkey as he can be sometimes. Yeah, that's me bear walking it up. He is so protective and so, like, just always watching out for me. It's so sweet. Y'all saw he went down there to try and help me up the up the thing. And he, it's just, it's, it's, it's very sweet. I'm very blessed with such wonderful children. Yep, and here y'all go. Haley was like, Mom, I'm filming this. You better keep it in there. So, yeah, I just ended up sliding. I just decided that I didn't ruin my shoes or my pants. Just my pride, I guess. So there's really not much more to to say or to narrate on here. The, this is just the town, you know. Um, so I'm going to just maybe pop up here again and there and maybe say a couple few things. I'm about to show you all the town hall. It's this real small little yellow building by itself. But the rest of this video is pretty much just me and my daughter exploring these, you know, silly old houses. They're not silly old houses. They're just old. We decided, you know, we got separated from the rest of the family and we just went up and walked around the loop it goes there's a road that goes up above the town and y'all are going to see it but i just thought i would let you guys appreciate the scenery and enjoy this calm music so again i might pop up in here again to narrate just a little bit or to let y'all know what goofy thing i'm doing but thank you guys so much for watching my video
When I see these old houses, like, I love to think about what has gone on in there, and it just, I don't know, it's a bittersweet sadness, if this makes any sense, like, to look in there and think that there was life in there one time, and now it's just, there's just nothing. And then, too, from a, you know, I love, these old homes have so much character and detail, and you just don't see that anymore in new houses. And y'all, I couldn't help but look at that trim work. I was like, oh my goodness, I bet in its prime, it was gorgeous. And now it's just this. Uh, the park service has boarded up a lot of these houses, so it's very rare to get to poke your head into one of these. This house was a little bit further off the beaten path and looked like it had been a little bit more neglected. But my daughter and I thought about climbing into these, but we just figured it was not the best idea. So Haley and I, my daughter, we both love the rain, love the cold, love the snow. We would prefer it out of any weather. And that's what she and I were just sitting here talking about, standing here talking about how awesome that would be to sit on that porch covered up with a blanket and coffee and just to watch the snow or hear the rain. Oh my gosh, it was putting me on a whole nother level of like, oh, that just sounds amazing. Yeah, my husband can't stand it. He hates it snow doesn't particularly like the rain shoe no not me i grew up in atlanta and i am done being hot and sweaty i will take the cold over the heat any day and Haley, she just she loves the rain she'll sit on the back porch anytime it rains she grabs her blanket grabs her book and gets out there and she will sit on the hammock all day or sit in the swing all day long So the mountain I'm actually standing on, not the one that we're looking at, um, a part of it is called McKendry Mountain. And there used to be a hospital there and it was one of the first training hospitals for nurses um, in the country. And people from all over the United States would come here because there were so many coal mining disasters that they would train, you know, these nurses um, on the coal miners which is incredibly sad and I mean but I, I mean it's good too but it was like you know a very well-known hospital um, and now there's nothing but ruins in it and it's incredibly difficult to get to. My husband took me up the mountain one time in our Jeep and I have never in my life been more terrified of a road and I'm actually not being dramatic because you literally look out the Jeep door and it's just straight down a mountain. I mean it's just it's crazy but that's I think those are the country roads that John Denver was talking about in his song because I mean there there are some pretty intense roads I'm sure you could even look it up there's several videos on YouTube of people going down McKendree Mountain and it is an intense an intense road I do not think I could go down it again not in a vehicle maybe on a four-wheeler but even then I think I'd rather walk it Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm going to end it with some pictures from my wedding. They obviously weren't from this day, but they were from my wedding, which was like about, I said, seven or eight years ago. My memory is going poop. But I hope wherever y'all are at, you are having a blessed one, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.